In this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about uploading photos and videos from your camera or gallery. So I've got a create product page right here where the users will fill out the information about the product and upload a photo. So let's look a little bit at the architecture here. So I've got a container that's giving me this gray background right here. And then inside, I've got a stack with an icon, which is this little guy right here, and an image that you can't see because there's no source right now. And what I want the user to be able to do is to click on this and then select an image for that product, either from their camera that they would take right there or from the gallery on their phone. Okay, so the first decision we need to make is where do we put the click trigger? Now, you always want to be generous with your tap targets. That is, you want them to be big. So you wouldn't want to put them on this icon right here because we're all using our thumbs and those aren't very accurate. So we're going to put it on this container. It gives a lot of space. And come over to this second tab here for actions and open up your action flow editor. And here we want to select the trigger. That is the thing that initiates all of the actions, all the logic that we're going to want to run here. And we've got tons available, but we just want the normal on tap. Next, let's add an action right here. And we want the user to be able to upload. So I'm going to search for that. And you can see under upload data, we've got two options. One, we've got the ability to upload or save media like videos or photos. And the other one is a file. Now, these are very similar, but we're doing images right here. So let's select that. Now, the first option right here, you might not see See, and that's because I have Superbase hooked up to this project. But if I didn't, and I can come over here and just turn this off real quick and go back to that action, you can see that I don't have that anymore. And that's because the only type of upload action is to upload it locally to this application. But once I have Superbase, or if you have Firebase integrated, then you're going to see that additional option right there. So if we go back in here, you can see now we see upload type again. And we've got two options. We've got Superbase. So that's if you're using Superbase storage, or if you have Firebase, you'd use Firebase storage. Or here is a local upload. That is, you're loading it to this device or this app. Now, you always have to load the image into the application in memory before you do something else with it, like load it into Superbase storage. This is just a sort of helper function that takes care of two steps in one. Now, we're going to have a video on how to upload with Superbase and Firebase later, but right now we're just going to do this local upload. Okay, great. But what is this widget state thing right here? What does that mean? Well, that's telling us where we can access this media, this photo or video that we've uploaded. So if I go out of here and just go into any widget that has a property binding, this orange thing right here, and go into widget state, you can see we've got this uploaded local file. That's that file that I just uploaded. You also have this additional property property is data uploading. So when your file is uploading, this will be true. And when it's not, it's off. This is helpful for things like loading states. OK, but we don't want to do that. We just want to finish this uploading right here. So let's open it up and check out some of these options right here. So the first option is whether to allow your users to upload media, so a photo or a video from your camera so that would open the camera and they would take it right there or a gallery that is the photos and videos they've already taken or both and right under it you can further specify whether you want just photos or videos allowed next you've got some resizing options and while you may think hey why don't i just have the largest image because that'll look the best you really don't want to do that and there's two reasons for this first is for network traffic that is 99 percent of the time you're actually not going to just use use a local upload and that's it. Most of the time you're going to upload your media and then pass it off to your backend. So like Superbase storage or a CDN or any type of blob storage like Amazon S3. And the larger the media is, the longer that network request will take. Also, all storage services are priced according to how much storage you're using. So you don't want to use unnecessary storage. And second, you only want it to be as big as what you need. That is, what's the largest pixel dimensions where you'll use this and that's all you need. So if I'm using this for a profile picture and I know that it's a hundred pixels, well, that's the biggest I'll ever need. Now, do keep in mind about pixel densities. So some devices have greater pixel densities, like 2x density, so you would actually need double those pixel values. Okay. 
Next down here, we have the image quality, and this will compress your image, and it is lossy. But the same logic applies here to with our dimensions up here. That is, you want to reduce the image quality to the point where you don't see any difference. And the only way to do this is to just test these values right here, and it goes from 0 to 100. So you could test them in increments of 20 and see at which point there's noticeable degradation. Next, you've got the ability to include the media dimension. That is the height and width of the media. Now, this is a bit computationally expensive, so just keep that in mind. But if I turn it on here, you can see if I come into that uploaded image, let's upload it right there, you can see that we've got these media height and width options available. So if you need to store those in the back end for any purpose, there you got them. Okay, let's jump back into our action. And the next option is to include a blur hash. And a blur hash is just a blurry version of your image. Okay, well, why would you need that? Well, once again, this is for increasing perceived performance in your app, because these blur hashes, just an encoded string, are super small. They're like a tiny summary of the image. And so when the user goes to a page where they're getting an image, they can download the blur hash almost instantly. And you display that to your users while the full image is downloading. This gives the perceived effect that the app is moving faster because you get an image that's like the final image. It's a sense that they're almost there. They'll almost see the image. Now, keep in mind, this is also a bit computationally intensive, so keep that in mind. Next, you've got this source picker style, and this just allows you to style this thing right here, this source picker, when it pops up to match your brand style. Almost done down here, we've got the ability to allow multiple images. The user selects multiple image images, and right now that this is clicked off because I have either camera or gallery, so if I click it just to gallery, Gallery, then it allow me to upload multiple images. Then we have a show snack bar option that'll be shown when the image is uploaded. And then finally, a name for the uploaded image. This is the variable name that you use as a reference when you're doing things later, for instance, like uploading this image to another service. Okay, and that's it. Next, let me show you how to display this image. So come over to the image and scroll down to image type. And we don't want network, that would just be like a URL, we want an uploaded file, then come into the uploaded file down here. And remember, it's sitting in widget state right here. And it's your uploaded local file. But always keep one thing in mind if you're doing this kind of logic right here. And that is if you have an image that's set to an uploaded file before the user actually uploads a file, this will be null. So you have to handle that use case. And it's pretty simple to do so. So let me show you over here. Here. So inside visibility here, we want to turn on our conditional visibility and we just want to check for that condition, check if the uploaded file is null or not. So we just want a condition right here and we want to look at this uploaded local file and confirm that. And we want to say if it's set. So if this evaluates to true, so if it is set, if the user has uploaded an image, then this will be true. So we'll be able to see it. If they haven't uploaded anything yet, it'll be false. And then the whole widget will not be shown. Okay, now this will work as expected. But most of the time, you're not just going to upload an image into your application's memory, you're going to send it off to your back end or another service. So let's finish out this flow right here. So presumably, the user uploads an image right here. And then when they click on create product, we send it over to our back end. So let's do that. So let's go to our button right here and open up our action flow editor and add some logic. So I've already set up an API right here. So let's just search for API call. And inside this group right here, I've got an add image record right here. Now, let me show you what this API looks like. So you don't encounter some problems right here. So inside this call right here, I've got my body set to multi-part. And that's important because when it's set to multi-part, then I'll have the ability to add the file type of an uploaded file. And if you're not seeing that, it's probably because you don't have your body set to multi-part. So I've got it set there. I've got a variable just called photo set to uploaded file, and then have a parameter in my multi-part body that's just accessing that 
variable. Okay, now if we go back in here, we can set that variable, our photo variable, and we want that set to our widget state, our uploaded local file. And let's just add a snack bar right here so we can confirm that it's been uploaded successfully. Show snack bar, uploaded successfully, and let's test it out. All right, let's select photo from our gallery. There it is, and when we create the product, beautiful. And that's how to upload files and videos to your Flutterflow app. In the next two videos, we're gonna show you how to upload to Supabase and Firebase, as well as give you access to a library that gives additional functionality for Supabase and Firebase storage. Let us know if you have any questions, and we'll see you in the next video.